this is Dave Meyer at SeniorPortraitPosingGuide.com, and this is lighting video number two. In today's video, we're going to walk through the pose and lighting setup for this image of a high school senior girl in a standing pose in the studio. This particular image uses lighting setup number three in the Portrait Photography Posing, Lighting, and Idea Guides four volume set, downloaded in a variety of locations on the SeniorPortraitPosingGuide.com website. Please come and join us. So let's get started taking a look at this image. We have the image here on the right and a setup of the camera room on the left side. So let's take out all those lights for right now and just look at this person's body. And let's get this little icon kind of arranged like her body is arranged. So we'll kind of rotate her a little bit about like that and then we'll rotate her head just a little bit about like that something important to keep in mind with portrait posing is for female subjects and oftentimes male subjects you want their body away from the main light turned away from the main light and their head or their face turned back towards the main light that is proper posing and lighting technique to have their body turned away from the main light their face or head turned back towards the main light which is the situation here this particular image is in front of a seamless colored background a seamless paper background I use seamless paper backgrounds a lot typically because I had like a dozen I have like a dozen different colors of seamless paper and by doing so you can match just about any color of outfit but I also you know so if you have a heavily some of a heavily patterned shirt with a, a bunch of different colors in it you're not going to have a painted background that's going to go typically that's going to go with something like that so you use a seamless paper which is just one solid color and you pick out one of the colors of their top to to match that uh, to match the background to um, but I also liked this monochromatic look and, and taking a background like this and adding a color gel to it to, to, to give a monochromatic look that really draws all of your attention to their face. So this is a spice colored background, oddly enough, which is kind of a medium light brown color with a burgundy gel on it. And let's maybe let's just talk about that background light first. The background light I used uh, was a photogenic, uh, I think this is a photogenic 750, um, with a typical 7 inch parabolic reflector. This, this is how the light comes with this a mono light body here, and it typically comes, photogenic anyway, comes with this typical 7 inch parabolic reflector. On the front of this reflector, I have a background, or I'm sorry, a, uh, a grid insert and it's just a metal piece that goes inside of the parabolic and it has a honeycomb grid on the face of it and basically what that does is concentrates the beam of light so that you get this spot it's not a spot but a, a more concentrated beam of light as opposed to if you didn't have that in there it would be lighting up this whole background the front of that honeycomb grid has a slot in it and that slot you can slide in different colored gels well if you can buy and I think the honeycomb grid comes with some metal frames to put the gels in but the metal frames are I don't remember the price but they're not cheap so I just made up a whole bunch of them myself I bought a package a variety pack of, of uh, colored gels Roscoe colored gels and then I took some shirt cardboard and I cut it the shape shape and size of that slot in the front of that and stapled the colored gels to it and so I had a whole bunch of different colored gels I had them in an A clip next to the to this background light and so I could quickly change the color of that background light so this light I would adjust just move this around visually I would move it in and out and rotate it so that I had this spot on the back you know right behind my subject now you're gonna see some images on the website where I screwed this light up and I've got it pointing too far over to one side or the other this is what I was looking for and if anything on this image maybe this light could have been pointed up a little bit to give a little more of that bright glow right behind her shoulders because basically it's a separation light and so it would have been nice to have that up a little bit higher but that's what that background light does the main light here <clears throat> 
if you've watched other lighting videos and you've, you'll see that my my favorite light to use in the studio is a 4x6 Larson softbox because it creates a nice wide wraparound light. Well, when I'm shooting against a seamless paper background like this, I don't want that wide wraparound light because then it washes out the color of the background. I want this color on these seamless papers to be really intense. And so I want to use a light modifier that doesn't let much light strike the background. So in this particular case, I'm using a Larson 14 by 48 strip box. I think it says 12 by 48 here, but I believe it's a 14 by 48. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because it creates a very concentrated beam of light. Whereas that 4x6 softbox, the light shoots out in all directions. This light has a very concentrated, narrow beam of light. Now, that means you have to be a little bit more careful with how you position that light. And quite honestly, I probably have this a little too direct into her face. The, 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 while it is, it's not overexposed and it's, it is an, it's a nice, it's lighting her face nicely, it's probably a little too direct. So you want, again, just like in using any light, you want to skim that light across their face. You don't, you don't want to position the light like that so that light is going right into their face. You want, it, you want it turned a little bit so you're using the edge of the light. You want to feather it. If you hear someone talk about feathering the light, you want to feather the light across their face. You don't want it direct for the typical portrait situation. You don't want it direct like this, you want to kind of feather it across the edge of their face. And so that's the reason for using those modeling lights so that you can see what effect your light is having on your subject. So we have the main light in there. Now, <clears throat> this light on her hair here and on her shoulder here is caused by the kicker light. Let's put the camera in there, you can see the camera. Um, so we have the kicker light right here, <clears throat> and this light is causing, again, this light here on her shoulder and on the side of her hair. And so this one, again, you've heard me say this before, I left this set at the same power and I adjusted this visually. I would move it in and out, being careful again, just like with this light, to feather it across their hair. I don't want it hitting them directly uh, in the side of the head, or I don't, especially if their ear is exposed, I don't want it hitting their ear directly. Then we have the hair light, as is typical, fixed at the ceiling, b behind the subject a little bit, and, and angled towards the back of the head. You can see the effect of the hair light here on the top of her head. And lastly, in this particular image, I used the fixed fill light. The fixed fill light was a white lightning, is a, fight, is a white lightning 1800, and it bounces into the back wall of the studio and provides a nice wide fill. Um, I had it set pretty low. I had the fill light set pretty low here, again, because I didn't want it to wash out the color of this background, but I just wanted it to provide just a little bit of fill. I could have used the reflector as well here on this one, but because this 14 by 48 strip box is so directional, the reflector isn't as useful with this kind of a main light. So I used that fixed fill to provide that little bit of fill, and I could have turned that fixed fill down even more to create a little more of a, of a of a shadow here and create that more of a Rembrandt triangular piece of light here on her cheek, which would have been proper. So that's basically the lighting setup on this particular image, a 14 by 48 Lars, Larson strip box here as the main light, the hair light, the kicker light to create this on her hair and on her shoulder, and this background light with a grid on it and a colored shell to create that in the background. Let's just talk for a second about the pose here now. 99% of the time, I ask a subject to put their weight on their back foot. And after years, honestly, after years of doing that, I really got tired. I was like, God, why the hell do I always have them put their weight on their back foot? They can maybe put it on their front foot once. And so I started doing that, and I kind of like this pose. So you can tell here that she has her weight on this left foot front foot. She's standing flat on that. And I told her to kind of lean forward and you can see that this leg here, you, you can't really tell in the image, but that knee is bent a little bit. And I told her to bring her toe, her foot up on her right toe. 
so that it kind of bends that leg and causes her to lean forward a little bit. And then like I always say, I would I touch my own back in this spot right here and I tell them to lean a little bit. Now, if you've watched uh, lighting video number one, which I just recorded a minute ago, you may remember it was a very similar pose. This arm, this on lighting video number one, her hand happens to be in her pocket instead of her thumb hooked in her back pocket. But this arm, her right arm on lighting video number one, you can see that she has a uh, three-quarter length sleeve shirt on. You can see skin from her arm right here, and you can see her arm here. And because of that, in lighting video number one, in that pose, you don't see this line as well. So having her pull that right elbow back, yes, it can give the the appearance that she was in a bad farm accident and lost that right arm, but uh, it, it also accentuates the thinness of her midriff here, which which obviously most girls are going to want. And you, you also still have this S shape here, which is what you're looking for in a female pose. Her face is turned back towards the light. The catch lights are in a good position in her eyes, not too far off to one side or another. <clears throat> Again, had this had this main light maybe been maybe been skimmed a little bit more, been instead of you know I probably have it like that. Had it been skimmed a little bit more, this light on her face wouldn't be quite so intense. On the other hand, because this image is so dark overall, the you know, the tonality of it, I think this really brings attention to her face, and I really like the expression just a just a small smile on her face. Uh, I think that's I think it's a pretty image. So that wraps up lighting video number two. By all means, please come and visit us at seniorportraitposingguide.com and download the four volume set Portrait Photography Posing Lighting and Idea Guides. Thanks for watching and have a great day.